Welcome back to another interactive broker video. All right, so um, we're continuing our focus on building the client library. So last two videos, I think it was two videos, um, we talked about doing things more related to the, thinking about the session, right? So understanding, okay, we're gonna have to connect to the API. It's a little bit more complicated than other APIs because now we have this weird component where, okay, well, maybe there's some stuff related to this Java server we've, we've got to maintain and then we've got to also do the authentication. So there's just a lot of mess and we're kind of realizing it's not as easy maybe per se as working with the interactive, I'm sorry, with the TD Ameritrade API. So there's some challenges, but for the most part, we're kind of overcoming them, but it also does kind of make us think a little bit more. Maybe there's some opportunity to simplify some stuff once we get uh, a working instance going. Now, I do want to share something with people because I know I have been asked more times than I can possibly count. Um, I am going to be kicking off a series soon um, we're going to talk about building a trading robot. So I am slowly starting to add documents to it, um, <clears throat> in very early stages. So not even remotely close to what the final product is going to look like, but, um, this is a different type of repository. Usually I make the repository and I, you know, then I, make it public once I kind of have a finished product. This is by no means a finished product. Like you can literally see it's pretty empty, but um, you know, this is such a popular topic and I know so many people have been wanting me to cover it. And so I kind of want to share the process as I'm developing it. Cause I know some of you got, you know, some people would, they could care less how I develop it. Some people are very interested in how I'm developing it. And so this way you can kind of follow along and seeing how I'm doing certain things when I'm going through this process of actually um, building a trading robot with it. So again, very, very early stages, but it is gonna happen. And we're gonna be using the TD Ameritrade API in order to do it. Um, I will tell you, building a trading robot is not easy in a lot of regards. Um, there's a lot you have to take into consideration and you really have to understand how your strategy works, but it's coming. <clears throat> okay. so. Let's get started. Um, in our previous video, we finished off with um, the connection method. So what we're going to now do is we're going to talk about this set server method. So what is this set server method going to do? So if you don't remember, that set server method was being in our create session method. So what this one's going to do is it's going to take the account ID that was passed through and what it's going to do is it's going to use that in order to basically say, hey, that's the account that I want to be part of this session. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a private method and we're gonna call it set server. It's gonna pass through that self keyword. And then from here, all it's gonna be doing is it's gonna be taking the account ID and it's gonna be basically attaching it to the session. Once it does, it does that, it basically returns back a Boolean that says, you have a new session, we've been authenticated, and our server's been set, so you're good to go. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to, um, <clears throat> we're gonna call the update server account method, or endpoint, and after we build this method, we'll start going through the process of building endpoints. So the first one is server update content. This will equal self update, server account, so that's gonna be the name of our method, which hits that endpoint. And then we're gonna have an account ID as our argument. In this case, I want it to be the account we initialized the uh, class object with. And then also, <clears throat> we're gonna have check equals false. Again, that will make sense once we define the endpoint. Okay, so we have our content. And then from here, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna define some messages. We're gonna say success. Um, and in this case, just because they're strings, I'm just going to copy them from the actual client one that I have. And so it's up here. But really all I'm doing with these is I'm just creating some messages. So that way, as the user um, creates the session, 
they're not kind of going like, what's going on? So here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the account. And here, I'm going to define the messages. Okay, then from here, um, we're gonna say if set in server update content keys and server update content, the value that's associated with that key, if that is equal to true, then what we wanna do is print the success message and then we're gonna say return True. <clears throat> if the account was set, print the message and proceed on. All right. From here, hell if um, uh, what is it? Message in server update content keys and server update content set equals true, then it's basically the same situation. Now, technically speaking, anybody see what I could do to maybe simplify it? Yes, I know what you were thinking. So technically I can make this so it either has to equal this one or it has to equal this one. Personally, I mean, yeah, you might be able to just simplify it like that. I personally, at least, I don't know. I personally just like to, you know, keep it a little bit uh, simple like that. Oh, wait, no. My apologies. <laughs> I put the wrong piece of code. <clears throat> I, I was looking at that wrong. So I was wrong. Actually, I had it right from the get-go. Apparently, uh... <clears throat> Apparently I was right to begin with. So we will get back a message sometimes. So if the account is already set, then in that situation, it means we do have the correct account set, but that also means that um, the server has quote unquote been set. So we tried setting it again, but it was already set to begin with. So we still consider that a success. So it was already set. <clears throat> and then finally, we're gonna have, um, else <coughs> where's my uh sorry i'm moving my notes around if i can find them 242 let's move them over out oh, there it is there we go Okay, so if we don't get that, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna print the failure message. <clears throat> and then also we're going to do um, a system.exit. So basically something happened during when we were trying to set the account. And so we were not able um, to successfully set it. So we wanna stop the script. We don't wanna necessarily um, keep it going. So with that though, we actually have a lot of what we needed to, to basically build. So what we can do from here is now we can start talking about endpoints. So what that's going to mean is we're going to now have to define some of our, what is the word? Basically the endpoints that handle authentication. So we're going to have to do things like validate the session. We're going to have to do things like, um, uh, what is the word? We're going to have to do things like uh, check if it's authenticated and stuff like that. So in order to kind of do that, though, what we want to do is we do want to have a mechanism to um, to validate certain arguments. And so um, this one's not really, quote unquote, validating, but it is going to help us prepare our argument list. And so this will be self. And then this will take an argument called parameter list, which will be none to begin with. And basically this does something very, very simple, which is if it's a list, it joins it. Um, otherwise, uh, uh, basically, it, it just basically takes the parameter list, it joins it, and then that way we have our kind of our condensed string. So if 
uh, type uh, parameter list equals is uh, actually what we can do is we can just say is instance uh, parameter list a list. Then what we can do is we can specify a delimiter. In this case, we'll just have that little comma. And then we'll have our parameter list will equal our delimiter. Uh, and then we'll do join. And then we'll have our parameter list. Because there's going to be certain endpoints where we have to pass through multiple arguments. And we want to join those all together before we make that request. So here, prepare a list of arguments and join them. All right. And then from here, um, we want to return the parameter list. Perfect. OK, so the first quote unquote session endpoints. So the first one is validate. <laughs> So here's the thing about the API. <clears throat> There's a lot of different endpoints you have to hit in order just to get a session started. And so one of them is um, you have to validate a session. So just because the session is connected doesn't mean it's validated. When you validate a session, you're basically like, the way I think about it is like you're turning it on. So you're turning on that session with the API. And so then you can start doing more of like the authentication components. So generally speaking, the endpoints are going to always look exactly the same. So there's always going to be the, your doc string that says, you know, hey, what are you doing? So here we're going to validate the current session for the SSO user. <clears throat> here I always do the same thing, which is define the request components. First one will always be your endpoints. It's a raw string. And then it's going to be SSO. And then it's going to be validate. And then next, we're going to have our request type. In this case, I want it to be get because it's a get request. And then our next one will be self underscore make request. The endpoint will be, well, that's just the endpoint. The request type is the request type. And then I parse it once it comes back. Now, this will change this line right here. So what I'm going to start building into it is I will show you because I actually have an example of it. Oh, I can't remember. I put it. I'll show you later, but. <clears throat> Basically, I'm, I built a client for the, the trade station API. And so that one's kind of a really good indicator of how I kind of write it. Um, but basically, I'll be doing all the checking of the actual request up here in this make request. And so I'll be able to handle the errors up there. So this will, again, I think, help make it a little bit easier to control and then also check for errors. And then from here, once we parse it, we do want to put that content back. So. Again, this was a learning experience for me too, is when I was like, huh, you know, when I'm making requests, it's, it's, it's kind of challenging to figure out which ones are gonna work, which one's not, especially when you're building it. And I said, you know, I really shouldn't be parsing it here because I don't know necessarily if I'm, if I'm always gonna get something back. I said, I really should have something up here in this make request one. That's basically where I was checking it. And I said, you know, I started doing this. I was like, oh God, this is so much easier because if I encountered an error, I could easily identify it and I was printing out all the information and I could store it, but also it was just much more consistent. And so a lot easier to deal with, I think, when it comes to actually handling the, the responses as they come back is not trying to parse it here, but parse it in that main one and then do all the checking there. So that was at least my experience. Okay, and then the next one will be um, tickle. This is literally what it's called. So basically what this one does is it keeps the session open. So keeps the session open if you don't make any request for a few minutes. 
So this is something that you can have run in the background. Um, because if you don't make a request every so often, the server will, um, what is the word? It will kick you out. Now, technically the gateway is going to be calling this method behind the scenes for you. So, um, I've never really had to call it because the, the client portal is doing that. So the Java server is doing that. Um, but you know, it's good to know that you do have access to it if you need it. Now with this one, it's a little bit um, different. It's just the tickle endpoint. And this one's weird. So this one's actually a post request. Still the same though. You're still gonna parse that content, but it's just a different request, that's all. And then from here, we will talk about the reauthenticate. So they do give you the ability if you want to, um, so as long as you have a valid SSO session, what you can do is you can actually reauthenticate that session. So this is a way to do it. So this will just allow you to reauthenticate yourself. Valid SSO session. So this is assuming you've called, um, assumes you've called the uh, SSO, validate endpoint. Very important that you keep that in mind. It's very important. So in this case, it's now going to be I server, which is most of our endpoints after this. And then it's going to be status. Still a post request. We're still going to make that request at that endpoint and we're going to parse it as it comes back. Okay. And then after this, I actually, I'm going to cut the video short because I, for whatever reason, I am losing my voice again and I can't keep talking. So I have to cut it a little bit earlier. So if you have any questions, by all means, put them down in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, we will see you in the next video.